Hey guys, it's GTO Technology, and I left you off right here where we had uh, gotten our on disable, on enable, and variables, <clears throat> public variables stated for our plugin. Uh, so, this is our broad auto broadcasting plugin, which will broadcast a message every 10 seconds uh, into the Minecraft game. Uh, it's just a tutorial, so for bucket uh, multiplayer on Minecraft. So, if you need or if you're kind of just starting off right here uh, and you don't know what's going on, just press the annotation right here and you can watch it from the beginning. Uh, this was a requested tutorial, so I thought I'd fulfill it. Just a few weeks late of when I said I actually would, so I apologize for that. Um, so right here we said broadcast message method. We called that and we passed a variable, which is the location of the file. but the issue is is that we don't have a broadcast messages method so let's go ahead and make that so we're gonna say public void broadcast capital sorry lowercase b broadcast capital M message parentheses um, string file name so we will have a we will be taking in a string and we will call that string file name for this method so we don't have to write um, so that we can call it in later on in this method I hope you're catching on to what I'm trying to say <clears throat> right now I'm trying to prevent coughing too much because I have a cold so I always have an excuse as to why I'm not making sense uh, sometimes I just don't know how to explain these things but I try and real fast um, I started typing while I was mumbling and ranting uh, right after public, you need to add static. So we have public static void broadcast message string file name. And right after file name and the closing parentheses, we're going to say throws capital I O exception with a capital E also. So that's capital I O E exception. Let's go ahead and uh, import that. Oh, wait, it's going to say we need a. Okay, you don't need to import that because we already imported it earlier on when we had. Uh, a catch for the IO exception. So right here you can see we're saying it's gonna throw an IO exception. And right here, since we're being calling this method, we need a way to handle that IO exception. So now you can kind of put two and two together and understand why we had to do the try and catch earlier on. We need a way to handle this exception error or message. So public static void broadcast message string file name throws IO exception opening curly bracket. Press the enter key. And we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, start reading the file or setting up a way to read the file. So um, our first variable will be fs, which is stands for file input stream. Uh, we're just abbreviating it so we don't have to type this every time. So file input stream fs semicolon. Go ahead and import file input stream. And say fs equals new file input stream uh, file capital N name I probably didn't mean to write fine name so we're going to replace that with file name capital N and right up here I forgot to capitalize the N in the string that we're taking in so right up here in the public stack void broadcast message I'm on a roll right here okay I apologize greatly I'm sure you already noticed this earlier on and it was bothering you Public static void broadcast with an A, uh, so B R O A D cast message, string file name with a capital N for the name. So I probably should redo this part, but I'm a little bit lazy. So it's public static void broadcast message string file name with a capital N throws IO exception. Um, FS equals new file input stream file name with a capital N. So now we have a new file input stream for our string which is actually the file that we stated earlier. So we're putting a file input stream for that file. Um, so we're going to say buffered reader, so the reader for the file, what will be reading the file, um, equals our buffered reader br equals new buffered reader new input stream reader parentheses fs and we're going to close it off with a semicolon 
So we got some importing to do. Just go ahead and import buffered reader, which is capital B and R, and input stream reader, which is all capital, uh, is all capitalized except, well, each word is capitalized within that. So buffered reader br equals new buffered reader new input stream reader fs. So that will be reading our file. Now we're going to do a little for statement. So for the integer i equals zero, i and i is less than the current line, and we're going to add one to i. And that should not say fort, that should say four. And then right below that, we're going to say br.read line. And yeah, so there we go. So for integer i equals zero, i is less than current not line. We're going to add one to i each time. So this is automatically incrementing each line as we read through the file. That's what a for loop does. So you're saying, wow, it's, uh, I hope you're catching on. It's just, um, it's, it's scanning through each line. That's what that does right there. So let's make a new string called the line. So this is the current line that's being read. So string line equals br.read line. So that's the current line that's being read. Line equals line.replace all. So now we're going to start, uh, inputting our chat colors so if we want to do and f or and e or and d or and a or whatever uh, in our broadcast messages in the txt file it'll automatically change those and d's and and f's and all that into chat colors so that way we can uh, not have you know the same color throughout each broadcasted message you can actually catch the reader's attention so line equals line dot replace all we're going to replace and f in our message with with the chat color white. Uh, I kind of screwed up with the auto assist, but you get the message. If it asks and there's a red line under chat color, just be sure to, <clears throat> to import it. So now we're replacing and F anywhere in these messages that we've written with the chat color white. Uh, next line, we're going to do the same thing, but for the chat color yellow. So <clears throat> line equals line dot replace all with a capital A and E tab key um, this time uh, chat color dot yellow plus the quotation marks, with the semicolon. <coughs> so let's just copy and paste this two more times. And for the next one, it'll be and D, and the one after that, it'll be and A. And for and D, we're going to say chat color dot light underscore purple. And for and A, we will be using green. So here we go. Anytime and F appears, it'll be replaced with the chat color white. And, we'll, um, and and E will be replaced with the chat color yellow. And D will be the chat color light purple. <clears throat> and and A will be the chat color light green. So, now we will be broadcasting our message. So, bucket.getServer.broadcast message, capital M, <clears throat> chat color dot light purple, so capitals light purple, plus broadcast so broadcast right here this little string will be in purple text in our minecraft plus chat and we'll put a space right before here this quotation mark you'll see why we'll make the mess rest of this message white unless we state otherwise in our message with and e and f like we saved the replacements earlier on or just a moment ago chat color dot white plus the line so let's just go over this I just explained the color replacements so that we can have some colored messages. Um, so bucket.getServer, so it's going to broadcast a message. Uh, the very beginning of the message will have a little bracket that says broadcast so that the users know it's not a normal message, it's a broadcast. And broadcast will be in light purple text. But we're going to go in and make sure that the rest of the line is in white unless stated otherwise by you in the message that you write. 
So plus line, which is the variable we stated earlier, which is the current line that's being read from the messages file. So under that, we're going to say line number reader, all capitals, the first, all letters are capitalized in each word, beginning letters. I am sorry, guys. I'm trying here. Line number reader, LNR equals new line number reader, new file reader. These are all in their own parentheses, so try to follow along. File, file name. I <sighs> finish off with a semicolon. Make sure uh, file name has capital N because <clears throat> we're referring to the variable that we stated earlier. So let's go ahead and do some importing. We're going to import the line number reader. LNR dot skip long dot max value. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to be able to really explain all this. Just know that it's essential for this whole thing to work. Um, making sure right now that there's a reason why there's that underline. Maybe it'll show up later. I'll just have a look a little epiphany. So right under uh, lnr.skip, we're going to say <clears throat> integer last line. So right now we're actually getting the last line of the file so that we know how many lines are actually in this messages file. So that <clears throat> when we're automatically incrementing each line and we're reading the new line number, we don't start looking for lines that don't exist. Like if there's 10 lines in a file and we're looking for line 11, now obviously that's going to throw an error. So right now what this is doing is it's making sure that that doesn't happen, that it stops at line 10 and then it resets back to zero. So end your last line equals LNR dot get line number. There we go. There's, nope, it's still there. Okay, so if you were getting that huge red underline, which most likely you were since you're just repeating what I'm doing, go back up to your imports and make sure if it looks like this to press this little plus on the side. <clears throat> and add the line import java.io like all the others dot file reader capital F capital R the issue was is that it wasn't importing file reader and it was having some issues with that after that that red line should go away and you need to import file so I apologize for that that would have been an issue had I just dismissed it so I'm glad that we just addressed that so right now integer last line equals and we're getting the last line by using the line number reader um, we say if the current line plus one is going to be the last line plus one opening curly bracket um, we're gonna make the current line reset back to zero so that we start the mess start reading the messages from the very beginning all over again otherwise we're just gonna keep on incrementing the current line until we reach that last line so that's it for our broadcast message method. Uh, this video hopefully was a little bit shorter than the last one. Uh, if you blink and you look at your line numbers, if you can, if you have them displayed, we are on line 68. Unless you did different spacing than I did, which you most likely did. Um. So yeah. Uh. Actually, right here I did make a typo. Line number 39, which is where we said our try and catch. You need to change broadcast messages to broadcast message. Hopefully you guys fixed that and noticed it. Because I didn't, and that's a little bit embarrassing. Obviously it would have to be called the same thing as the method that we just created. Otherwise, <clears throat> we're trying to reach a method that doesn't exist. Because broadcast messages is not a method. While broadcast message is. So in our next video, we're going to be showing you how to stop broadcasts, how to cancel them. Now to handle it if the broadcasters, <coughs> broadcasters are already running and we're trying to start them, obviously we're going to have an issue so we're going to have to handle that. It's like saying uh, start Windows if it's already running. Obviously that doesn't make sense. So we're going to have little commands and we're going to try to handle those. And we're going to be using those to stop and start the whole broadcasting plugin. So next video. Uh, it's most likely already uploaded, but if not, subscribe, rate, and comment. And even then, if it is uploaded, please do those also. 
uh, if you had an issue before you dislike <clears throat> make sure the coding is the same as what you're seeing right here and you followed all the steps I stated and if then you're still lost I'll be glad to help you just comment and uh, before you press that dislike button if you didn't get any help out of this just be sure to make sure that you've already asked for my help because uh, I don't know I try to keep that like bar high and uh, I don't want you guys to feel like um, I'm going too fast or <clears throat> I'm not comprehensible. So I have a cold, so there are probably pauses in this video where I have to cut out me coughing or something. And I sound a little bit thin. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so it's kind of a pain in the butt, but we'll get through it and we're almost done. <coughs> <coughs> we're on line 69, and there are 99 lines total so we only have 30 more to go which is yeah it's, it's good it's not much so thanks for watching rate comment and subscribe